you're welcome back viewers of course this next recipe la pignolata of course this was made famous in messina they have their version of it but of course the calabrese have their version is that right yes that's right and what is it exactly it's a fried christmas pastry isn't it fried christmas pastry and mm. uh, we in the end product form it in the shape of a reef for the pignolata we use plain flour we use self-raising flour we use eggs and then we do, after we have fried, um, the pignolata swears in hot vegetable oil. Uh, we will strain them on an, on an absorbent paper and we will do the honey glaze over them and bind them together with um, warm honey and sprinkle them with hundreds and thousands. So therefore we dampen our hands in water and we shape the, the little pastry swears with the honey glaze around it into a reef because you have to shape it whilst it's hot because then once it cools you won't be able to move it the honey will solidify and then you've just got you just won't be able to work with it anymore so we shape it into a reef as neatly as we can at that stage while it's still nice and warm uh, traditionally we shape it as a reef symbolizing the permanence of life that there's no beginning and there's no end and that God is eternal. So I've got my two cups here of plain flour, which I'm going to sift to aerate it, make it lighter and get rid of any um, lumps in that. And to that, I'm going to add um, just a couple of tablespoons of self-raising flour. The self-raising flour will just help to puff up these little um, golden nuggets a little bit more. I crack each egg individually as a test in case there are any imperfections because I don't want to spoil all my ingredients. So I put them in individually. Two and three. So I have that all in there. And now I'm ready to start working my dough. Just to bind it together now, uh, we have to bind it well and try and achieve a nice workable, pliable dough. Okay, I have used three eggs. So basically for two cups of plain flour, that would be the ratio that you would use. Of course, if you wanted to make more, you would uh, double or triple the recipe as you wish, according to how much you would like to make and what the occasion is because the idea of this recipe is that you share it around with your friends, family, etc. You wouldn't go to all this trouble just to have the pignolata on your own. At this stage of uh, kneading the pastry, you might find that it's a little bit difficult so, because your hands are quite sticky. So one little tip at this stage before you throw your pastry on the board is to just pick up a little bit of flour and just rub it between your hands, clean your hands and just remove any of the excess pastry to give you a smooth feel to start working your pastry. So I'm going to flour my board now and throw the pastry on there and start to knead that on my pastry board. Try and keep it all together and I'm sure that we're quite close to obtaining a nice workable and play pliable dough which will make that yummy pignolata. So my dough is coming together nicely and is nearly at the point of me um, working it out. Having worked the dough for five or ten minutes now you can see that my dough has come together nicely and I am just about ready to knead out my dough. So now for easier management, I have cut my pastry into six pieces and I have flattened them. Um, like so, so the purpose of that is so that this falls easier into the machine. You put your machine on the largest setting. You don't work it like your pasta and you work it very minimally. 
because the more you work your pasta in the machine, the, the dough that is, the thinner it comes and we don't want a thin pastry. Now we're going to trim our pastry sheets. So we actually get rid of these irregular pieces as we more or less want uniform pieces of pastry to make our pignolata. I'm next going to put my handle in the next setting which is a tagliatelle setting of a pasta machine and I'm putting my pastry through now and catching the tagliatelle on the other end. As you can see the pastry is quite thick unlike your pasta tagliatelle. I just put a pinch of flour in there just to keep it nice and separate and with those tagliatelle strips we will cut them with the scissors in uh, tiny squares and let them rest just to dry out a little. Once we have done that um, then we will fry some hot vegetable oil and when it's quite hot uh, we will deep fry the tagliatelle squares they amazingly puff up really nicely. The pignolato is now puffing up nicely, but we just have to wait till they have a golden colour. Nice and golden, they're really ready. Don't let them burn too much. You really have to keep your eye on the stove. And this is the idea of deep frying. As, as you can see, they're not oily at all. We get rid of all the excess oil and we have the nice dry uh, pignolato squares. I put the honey now in, in a low heat until the honey starts to bubble. The honey has now come to uh, a bubble state. So now I pour in my pignolata. I stir the pastry in the honey glaze until it is fully coated with the honey. That is what binds it together and gives it a nice shiny and tasty appeal. Okay, now I'm just going to dampen the bottom of my plate with some water so that when the pignolata hardens up, it doesn't actually stick to the bottom. And now we are pouring our pignolata into the plate. Now is the time that you have to shape your pignolata because once it hardens, then you cannot shift it anymore. So this is the, a crucial time when you're actually shaping it and making sure that you're happy with that. Because it's so hot, I might have to use my hands just to shape it properly. So the pignolata is hot, so I'm just dipping it in a little bit of water as such. To finish it off, we're using our hundreds and thousands. Make it pretty and festive. Uh, hundreds and thousands in English. Diavoletti in Italian. So we have our completed pignolata. Blanca, that was absolutely fantastic. A lot of Thank work, you. a lot of skill, Grazie. a lot of cultural history there. Love those things. And of course, I've got a little surprise for you now because uh, Calabria is known for their dessert wines. I've got a fantastic Greco di Bianco, which I think is the perfect accompaniment. accompaniment. Just taste that. Mmm. Buonissimo. Does that, does that taste like Calabria? Mm, very nice. Oh. Yes, yes, it just brings me back. <laughs> la nostalgia. Ah, la nostalgia. Yeah. Well, I hope you will come back and visit us again. Tell us some of your wonderful stories of your time here in Australia. Thank the you. The great things that you've learned from your mum and that you're going to give to the next generation. A la prossima. I hope Ciao. to say, stay tuned to another episode of Regional Italian Cuisine. Ciao. Ciao.